Mm. Okay, so when two right triangles are similar, that means pairs of corresponding sides are proportional. So this is what we've been talking about for a couple of days now. When we talk about pairs of corresponding sides being proportional, that doesn't mean that they are equal, but what does that mean? Yeah, when you say similar, what do you mean? If, if pairs of corresponding sides are proportional, that doesn't mean that they equal the same number, but what does it mean? No. Okay. So if sides are proportional, what does that mean? What does that mean, though, to say they're similar? Okay. It enlarges or reduces at the same what? At the same rate. So if one of them is like multiplied by five, then all the other sides would also be multiplied by five. Perfect. So we can say that they're proportional, which means you can set up proportions for corresponding sides. So if I gave you this proportion where I said AB over BC, how would you complete the proportion DE? How would I complete this like question? What would go in for that question mark? EF. Yeah. Why? EF because it's in the same spot. So BC is the hypotenuse of this triangle. So EF is the hypotenuse of that triangle. So for completing that proportion, that's the side it would go in. So these are all called trigonometric ratios. And what trigonometric ratios means is it's just a relationship between sides of a right triangle. Okay. So in this case, it's between two sides of two different right triangles. What we're going to talk about today is the ratios between two sides of the same right triangle. So all right triangles have a lot of special things about them that we've talked about. So you can use the Pythagorean theorem to find missing sides. We have special right triangles like a 30, 60, 90 where the leg relationships, you can memorize those. And there's a lot of things about right triangles that are special. This is just another one of them. So there are three different trig ratios. And again, trig ratios just means the relationship between one side and another side. Those three relationships are sine, cosine, and tangent. So those are three different trig ratios. And what that means is if you take any angle in a triangle, so we're looking at angle A right here, the sine of that angle, so I would say sine of angle A, is equal to the opposite leg over the hypotenuse. So if I'm looking at angle A, this would be the opposite leg, and this is the hypotenuse. So the sine of angle A is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So again, all this means, sine, cosine, and tangent are just three different ratios that compare the legs of a right triangle when you compare them to a specific angle. So what this is gonna allow us to do is figure out missing pieces of right triangles when all we have is an angle or a side instead of having to use the Pythagorean theorem every time. Okay, Ash, go ahead first. It's opposite, yeah, because this one is across from this one. Yeah, so it's opposite right here. Adjacent would be the one that's right next to it. And then this is always the hypotenuse. If it was C, it would be this one. But we don't actually ever do C because it's the right angle. But we'll talk about that in a second. Tanya. Is it basically what we did yesterday, just adding names? Yeah, pretty much it's what we were talking about yesterday, but we're adding names to it. Okay? So if you guys have a calculator, take a look at it. If you don't, try to find a neighbor who does. Thanks, Ryan. Okay. So if you do not have one, that's okay. Just look on with a neighbor. What I want you guys to see is there's three buttons on the calculator. There's three buttons on the calculator. So go to this, look above the seven, two buttons up from the seven. It looks like what word? 
sin. That's the abbreviation for sine, okay, because they can't fit a fourth letter. Above the eight is cos, which is the abbreviation for cosine. And above the nine is the tan, which is the abbreviation for tan. Sorry, for tangent. Okay? So that's what those buttons mean. So if you've ever seen those and been like, I don't know what those buttons are, that's what those buttons are. And we're going to talk about how we use those in just a second. But again, just to reiterate, all this means is like the sine of A is the same as the ratio between the opposite side and the hypotenuse. Okay? So if I then was looking for the cosine of A, that's the relationship between the adjacent. What does adjacent mean? right next to, over the hypotenuse. And then if I were looking for tan A, so tangent of A, that one is opposite over hypotenuse, oh, sorry, over adjacent. So if you're like, I'm not going to remember that, this is an acronym to help you remember it. And I'm not kidding you. When you ask people, like if you ask adults today, like what's one thing you remember about geometry, a lot of them will say SOHCAHTOA, okay? So SOHCAHTOA is, I swear to you, I mean, you can run an experiment and just ask random people yeah, one thing they remember awesome. about geometry. I just did it in the bullpen. I was like, oh, I'm teaching trig ratios. And everyone was like, oh, is that SOHCAHTOA? I'm like, I didn't even make that up. I didn't pay them to ask that. So SOHCAHTOA is just an acronym to help you remember this. What does acronym mean? It's a short version. It's a short version and the first letter of each one. So SO means sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is C A H because it's adjacent hypotenuse. And TOA is tangent opposite adjacent. So not only does it help you remember which ones, but it's also in the right order. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay, so for example, in this triangle right here, we're looking only at angle A right now. So if we're looking at angle A, and here's our acronym, SOHCAHTOA, the sine of angle A would be equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So in this triangle, what is opposite A? Six. So sine A would be equal to six over 12. Okay, which is the same as one half, which is the same as 0.5. All right, either of those are fine. You could also leave it as six over 12. All right, I don't really care if you reduce them at this point. All right. What about the cosine of A? So remember, cosine is adjacent hypotenuse. So what's adjacent to A? 7 over 12. And again, it kind of looks like, like isn't 12 also adjacent to A? Because isn't 12 also right next to A? So how come, we put, how come 7 is the one we call adjacent? Because 12 has to be the hypotenuse. Okay, so even though 12 is technically adjacent to A, we don't use it as adjacent because it has to be the hypotenuse because it's the longest leg. All right, and then last but not least, what would be tangent of A? Six over seven, perfect. Okay, six over seven. So this is similar to what we were doing yesterday. We're just kind of adding names to it. And also, we'll use this on Monday to figure out missing legs and missing angles. And we're going to use this. But for today, we're just trying to figure out what the ratios are. OK. So write each trig ratio for angle S. So write each trig ratio for angle S. And again, I start writing this at the top of like all my stuff. Yeah, because it helps me remember. It helps me visualize. So what's the sine of angle S then? 24 over 26. Which ends up, again, you don't have to do this, but would reduce to 12 over 13. What would be cosine of S? 10 over 26, because 10 is adjacent. And then last but not least, what's tan of us? 24 over 10. Perfect. All 
All right, now leave it as an improper fraction. It's a ratio, so don't convert it into a mixed number. Just leave it as an improper fraction. But remember, tan has to be opposite on top, adjacent on the bottom, because the O comes before the A. Go. Oh, I reduced, because 2 goes into 26 13 times. But you don't have to reduce, so just leave them as this is fine. 24, 26, 10, 26, 24, 10. What? What? Okay. All right, try it for Q on your papers. Mm -hmm. So now you're doing it, all the same stuff, but instead of angle S, it's angle Q. So what would be opposite? 10. So sometimes I even write that. I just put like op adjacent right here. So I remember, because I know that's going to be the hypotenuse. So it's Q. So what's opposite Q? 10 is opposite, but what's hypotenuse? 26. So that means sine of Q should be, okay, which is not the same. Nope. All right, so what is sine of Q? 10 over 26. Cosine of Q? And then tan of Q. Good. Okay. All right. Do you notice anything about sine and cosine? They're the same but switched. Yeah. So there's a relationship between sine and cosine and sine of the different angles. And that's what we will work on far down the road. It depends on what angle they're asking for. So if you put sine Q is 24 over 26, that would be wrong. Because sine has to be opposite over hypotenuse. So you have to go, I, that's why I always like write in the angle I'm looking for. Sometimes I even like draw the opposite line. But I pretty much always label it op and adjacent. OK. I don't know why that's in there twice. All right, so that's it. Um, so all we're doing then, the practice sheet I'm going to hand out, you're literally just going to write on there what the fraction is. On the directions, it says find the value of each trig ratio. So you're literally just writing the fraction. If you want to make it a decimal, you can. You don't have to. So for example, it'll tell you like tan of Z for the first one. So find Z, and then tan is what relationship? Opposite over adjacent. Good. So you're just finding the op over the adjacent. Hold on. Yeah. Okay, any questions? All right.